All right, here we go. Salute to Nick Station on this Thursday evening. Another edition of KFTV Post Game Live presented by Underdog Fantasy. Go to underdogfantasy.com and use our code KFTV for a first-time deposit match of up to $100. Knicks headed into the Mile High City for the last of a four-game winning streak going in as the Road Warriors trying to topple the champs. And despite giving it all they had, man, it was just too much Jokic, too much Murray, and too much Michael Porter Jr., man. Knicks fought valiantly for four quarters, but it just wasn't enough as the champs pulled away late and got the dub as they survived in Alec Burke's barrage. Nuggets win, 113 to 100, man. Let's talk about it. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. See for the franchise, Alex Sotaros on the ones and twos. 113 to 100, man. Knicks fall to the champs. Look, man, not mad at it. They fought. They gave it all they had. They had a great road trip, all things considered. And, um, you know, went in their high altitude and everything. Last game of a four-game road trip and, and, and put it all on the line. And... Um, you know, as I said, starting off this game, you saw some great two-man action from Jalen Brunson and Isaiah Hartenstein picking up where they left off in Golden State. A very encouraging sign. I thought overall you saw Brunson not only uh, scoring, but playmaking very well, man. Just threading the needle, uh, trying to make his teammates better, and, and elevating the overall team in the first. And, and I thought that's what allowed the Knicks to get out to some leads and, and really hang in there. Another thing that I liked about them – Early in this game was that, you know, they were able to, to, to keep the Nuggets off of the offensive glass and also take care of the ball. So it allowed them to, to keep each possession very competitive. And on top of that, I thought the defense was, was pretty good for the most part of the night. Now, you know, once the second quarter came, came on, uh, Nuggets started to find, get into their groove. And by the time you got into the half, you, you know, you, you knew, or at least I figured that things were kind of going to change in, in the third quarter and the Knicks were going to have to stay in their A game to, to have a chance. But in the third quarter, you saw the Nuggets really imposing their will from from Jokic just just being a, a, a magician out there. Um, the Nuggets really imposing their size. You know, Michael Porter Jr. throwing it off the glass. You know, Aaron Gordon. And so, you know, the, the champs doing champ things really kind of set a good tone in the third quarter. But in the fourth, you had some spirited play by the Nick bench, led by Alec Burks. You know, one minute he's 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 throwing it off the, the side of the the uh, the glass. He's saying we don't need that. Next minute he's splashing a couple threes. He's getting to the free throw line. You know, he's scoop laying like George Gervin. That's that's just big money Burks for you. But at the end of the day, you know, Nuggets just uh, settled back in with their starters and uh, pulled away. Man, fourth quarter is their time. Crunch time is is their time. That's when they kick in a championship mode and uh, just put us away, man. Your thoughts? I, I can tell that there's a little uh, disappointment in your heart because you really wanted that that win. So that way you could go off on your guy, Alec Burks, and saying, hey, man. Uh, you know, man. Nah, not really, man. That, you, you, you're now out of the hive that you're going to hop back in the hive. Nah, Make a decision, not, man. Not what are you really, doing over man. here? man. You know, listen, I, I was hoping for a miracle here tonight. And mm. that, that that stretch in the fourth quarter where it was kind of like, you know, they're down by like 13, that's big money time. Go in there and, and act like, you, you know, you're Michael Jordan like some of the fans think you are. Go up there and chuck. And he did that, and he, and he kind of got him back into the game. A fake Nick comeback led by Alec Burks. Isn't that a perfect story? For his, for his play, yes. That's exactly what he gave you. He gave you a perfect, lot of no, no, yes, and a lot of no, no, Nick no. story. Perfect Nick story, man. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But look, man, it was a, you, you got to be proud of how the Knicks went out on those West Coast trip. Yeah. They come out 3-1 and one on the West Coast trip. Hard-fought effort, as he said, against the reigning champs in the Denver Nuggets. And, you know, to me, it's just it, it's just running out of steam. And you saw it yeah. in the third quarter. I mean, the, the Nuggets were able to put up 27 to the Knicks' 20 points. And it was really the MPJ show. And the Jokic show in that quarter, MPJ getting you nine points, seven points for Jokic, 
uh, as well. But we didn't have an answer in the third quarter and who was going to keep up with their fire, uh, their firepower. That's right. You know, you had decent scoring from Dante. Uh, you had Brunson who led with eight points, Dante with five. But then outside of that, you weren't getting anything else from those guys. And if you're not going to get, yeah. if you're not going to have the offense to keep up with the Nuggets, they're just going to be able to roll away, yeah. man. I mean, the fourth quarter, I- I'll say this. It, it, impressive play by the second unit because you can even go back to the second quarter and the Knicks yeah. before Brunson and everybody else came back in to match Jokic, MPJ and so forth. Knicks had a 41 to 38 point lead over the Nuggets. And that's, uh, you know, a unit with McBride, Burks, Bogdanovich, yeah. um, you know, that was a good effort by them. So it wasn't that the Knicks didn't have the, the strength of the second unit to keep them in this game, which has been the story for the most part since making the trade, uh, for Burks and Bogdanovich, it's more so there was not just enough offense to keep it it's all through enough. all four quarters. Yeah. Yeah, it just wasn't enough. Uh, I thought they got good looks throughout the night, uh, even in the third quarter. Uh, just a lot of, no, even Brunson, just a typical quarter for him. A lot of his st- stuff for it was falling short, and he wasn't mm-hmm. really connecting. Um, Dante w- was off. Hart didn't have a game much of the night at all. So, you know, even though I thought the, the ball movement was good, I thought they were very patient in, in their attack. They just couldn't get it, couldn't get it to fall. And, and on the flip side, um, Nuggets had to cook. And Michael Porter Jr. was my player to watch. He's been he's been red hot. And I thought, uh, on top of the fact that he's been shooting the ball well, the size factor was going to hurt him because he wasn't just killing him from three; it was killing him from inside as well. You know, so mm-hmm. um, I, I thought Tibbs had to pick his poison. It was either go with more offense and go small and try to keep up, or go with more size a bit more defense size-wise. But, you know, we went small, and the Knicks had their advantages here and there. But then, you know, once the game wore on, the Nuggets kind of wore them out. Yeah, and look, I think to me what really gives an indication if this Nuggets team is going to roll is how Jamal Murray is playing. And, I mean, from the first basket, you saw how he got downhill, yeah, got an easy layup, and then just put up 10 points in the first quarter. If he's going to be that aggressive – you don't have an answer to stop him. It just makes life easier for Nikola Jokic. It seemed like he was trying MPJ. to trying to send a message to McBride, man. Felt like he was trying to. I think he, he felt like he was he was trying to take that challenge a little personally after McBride kind of took it to the chef. It, not only to McBride, but Alec Burks, man. I mean, even after yeah, the, yeah, the foul tight. in the fourth quarter, he was yeah. angry. Yeah. You know, giving a little, showing a little emotion. Yeah, I think he was a little nervous when when the Burks flurry was coming through. He, you know, he, <laughs> t- he put him on edge a little bit. Put him on edge. It's a stupid foul by Burks, man. It's a stupid foul. It was bad. Yeah, Burks, Burks thought it was like 05 again. Yeah, he tackled him. <laughs> Back in 05, that would have been all right, you know? Back in 05, a lot of things would have been all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't do that these days. So, yeah, just, just, just uh, you know, good good fight, but it wasn't, wasn't their night, and they go home to fight another day. But uh, when we take a look at the standings here, Al, did the Knicks drop to fifth place? Yes, they did. Because the Orlando Magic, ladies and gentlemen, continue to win. Orlando beating the New Orleans Pelicans uh, tonight. And uh, don't look now, but the Magic have won five in a row, Al. So the Magic have uh, pushed up on the Knicks here. They've been on their tails for quite some time. And they move within uh, half game up on the Knicks. They move to half game up on the Knicks for uh, for fourth in the East now. And the thing that stinks about this CP is that third is there for the taking with the Cavs not having Donovan Mitchell and the Cavs just being so up and down. You, you know, it's tough to say, especially against the Denver Nuggets, it's tough to say, all right, they should have won this one because it is the Denver Nuggets. The Denver Nuggets are fully healthy. We beat the Denver Nuggets when we were fully healthy. Yeah. So n- to not have Randall, another scoring hub on this team, makes a big imp- makes a big difference. And it's just hard for me to say, ah, oh, this is you know they could have done anything, but now you got to go back home. You got the Brooklyn Nets this Saturday. Yeah. Win there, get back on track because you know do you want the four or five matchup with Orlando? Do you want to go get three and go get potentially the Pacers, maybe the Miami Heat if they if they start to you know overtake the Pacers and get that six spot. 
the whole the whole seating right now is going to be up in the air. But if you're the Knicks, you want home court advantage either way. Yeah, that that, that is correct, man. So you know the uh, the key will be to take advantage of the next few games, which should be winnable games. You, you not only have uh, the game against the Nets, you play the Raptors. They also play. Let's see, coming up, they they have Nets, Pistons, Raptors, Spurs, right there. Win those four. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Win those four right there. And then you have a tough one, Easter Sunday, home against the Thunder. And then you travel to Miami against the Heat. And and there we go, man. We're, we're, we're just about wrapping it up soon. So, hey. That, CP, that's who, who are those games again the Knicks play? The, uh, the, the Nets, New Jersey Nets. Mm-hmm. Raptors. Oh, Pistons, Raptors, Spurs. In that ta- in that time span, this is who the Magic have to play: the Kings, the mm. Warriors, the Clippers, Grizzlies, Blazers are easy. But then you get the Pelicans right afterwards. Mm. But no, and they B- end no the season B. with no Bi man. Brandon Ingram going down with a bad injury tonight. Mm-hmm. Bad injury. And then you tonight. and then you have the Bulls who've been feisty mm. as of late, especially in the second half of the season. You get the Rockets, you get the Bucks, you get the Sixers, and then you get the Bucks again if you're the Magic. Mm. So, All right, so this it's not an easy schedule tough. for them, yeah, man. Yeah, not an easy schedule for them. They're gonna go through a little tough stretch. So, let, let's let's see. So, to everybody in the chat, once again, man, hit that thumbs up button for your boy CP and Alex on the ones and twos. So, to my franchise channel members in the chat, man, if you guys are franchise channel members, leave an emoji in the chat, man. Let us know that you guys are in here. Call us up with your takes on the game, 657 383 1509, or you can call us up on the KFTV Discord. Let's talk about it, man. You know what? Despite the loss, I liked iHeart tonight, man. iHeart. I, I liked how he battled with Jokic tonight. He took it to him offensively. Defensively, he was scrapping. You know, and he made the he made the Joker work. That's all he could do. Made the Joker work. I thought his pick and roll defense was fairly good, but it was just better execution by the Nuggets. That's why they're great. But on the offensive end, man, 20 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists, 8 for 10 from the field, 2 blocks of steal. Isaiah Hartenstein continuing to elevate his game, and tonight against the MVP. Fearless against the MVP tonight. Great game by him, man. I Heart was incredible tonight. Loving a two-man game with him and Brunson. Need to see yes. more of that. It's potent. I'm, I'm loving it, man. And, and CP, it's nights like tonight where you're like, you can't love Mitch. You know, it's great to see that he's back on the court practicing, went through contact yesterday. But even after a night like tonight, this is why you want Harnstein in the starting rotation because of his scoring, right? Gives, up 20, gives you 20 points against the MVP. You now talk about getting eight boards, three steals. I mean, three assists, one steal, two blocks. I mean, he's just filling the stat sheet, but it's the passing. I mean, he only has three assists, CP, but the fact that he's looking for guys cutting. I mean, you talked about the two-man game with Brunson, the fact that he's got a good give-and-go from the high post, stuff of that nature. I mean, you got to keep working off of that. And when you have OG back, when you have Hart out there, Dante, it doesn't matter. He's always looking for the cutter. And when Randall was out there, he was looking for Randall as well, you know, who's cutting baseline or just going down the lane and so he just gives you so much versatility as a big man that you know you see that's only one part of it but if you're gonna get scoring like this too 20 points from the five on the knicks that's unheard of that's great you you go back to any time under tom thibodeau you get 20 points out of your center that's insane that's a great night that's a phenomenal night you should typically you're winning and at some point we're only down by five in the fourth quarter cp yeah. So the fact that you're getting this out of Hartenstein, he is earning, he's getting that back this summer, the way he's been playing, all right? Doing a great job being a starter for this team. And he's going to put pressure on that front office to make a decision, okay? Because it's going to be tough to lose somebody like this that opens up the offense for the New York Knicks. Yeah. And I know the front office is thinking about that. They got to they gotta find a way to keep him. And today, Tibbs talked about, in terms of Mitchell Robinson, um, you know, slow and steady is how they're going to proceed with this with Mitch. Slow and steady is how they, is how they're going to roll. Uh, just bring him along slowly, and and rightfully so. It's a good approach. 
You got iHeart is balling. Precious is doing the damn thing. Sims can hold it down. And they said they're going to ramp Mitch up slowly and, uh, and get him ready for the playoffs. So I, I like that. Doesn't seem like you're going to see him Saturday against the Nets. But maybe after that. Well, according to Tibbs, it's going to be a, uh, a slow process. It's going to be a slow process. Uh, so to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumb th- thumbs up button for you boys. Mr. Dunn's in the chat. Salute. JJTM. What up, Junior Karoma in here, Al? Shout out to Murphy GQ. Who else you want to shout out in the chat, man? Shout out to Brooklyn Vega in the chat. Brooklyn shout out to Vega. Lifton. Well, hey, Brooklyn shout Vegas out to said, JJ. Brooklyn Vega said tonight's game means the Nuggets wouldn't wash us in the championship series. <laughs> <laughs> Silver lining. If we would have won tonight, oh boy, oh, we, we might have broken the record tonight. We, we might have been doing until we've been doing a show until three a.m. What are we yeah, talking about here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got JD in. The, we got JD in the chat. Shout out to our guy JD. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to JD. Oh, JD said he got smoked in a fantasy draft tonight. We'll get to it. We'll we'll, we'll talk about it later. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it later. I don't, I don't need to, you know, check the check the stats. Mm. Sounds like I won if he's in here. If he's in here chirping early, so I have a feeling I might take one tonight. Hey, I was on a two-game winning streak against all of you. Yeah, in you these were. Drafts. You, you definitely were. Hoodies Vintage, shout out our guy. Hoodies Vintage, out fight out super chats. It's moral victories aside. That was a winnable game. Champs are not questionable lineups, particularly too much small ball. Simple tweaks, smart coaches do. You know what? You know we've seen this all the time from a lot of championship teams, man. From the Lakers dynasty to the Spurs, like. Championship teams, they always look vulnerable in, in those spots between the third and fourth quarter. Like, yo, we, if we would have done this, that, and the third. And, and then it, it, they, they just pull away in the end, man. That's what that's what the Nuggets did, man. I mean, they always make it seem like that. I mean, this is... Look, the Nuggets are just a well-oiled machine at this point. The, the way that they're handling the second half of the season is that of a championship roster, right? You see how even at the beginning of the season, they weren't really gunning for first, but now they're in the mix for first and they can, they can get it right there. They're second right now, right? They're 49 and 21 versus OKC. But for a long period of time, they were hovering between three and four right now. But what the nuggets do, man, is that they just know how to pace themselves throughout the season and in the game. And you even see it tonight. The Knicks were toe to toe going into the into the half with this team. Nuggets come out of the third quarter saying, "All right, it's time to put this team away because we don't want them to hang around too long." And then you see that even though the Knicks were able to make a comeback in the fourth, the Nuggets had done so such a, a good enough job at getting ahead in the third that it was just too tough for the Knicks to overcome. And whether that's the Nuggets knowing that, look, this is high altitude, so they got to adjust to our arena, yeah. whether it's that they're on the fourth game of a West Coast trip, the last game, so they're probably done with all the traveling. They want to go home already. It doesn't matter. They're still – they just know how to lock in and execute every single play, half-court transition, so forth. That's that's why it's funny when we try to crown all these other teams. Like, even doing it for the Celtics, you're like, oh, well, the Celtics, look, they're, they got the best team right now. It's like – well, the best team is still out there just cruising right now in yeah. the West. Yeah. Yeah. And give credit to the, to the Nuggets because they did what they had to do, man. This is just a, a well-seasoned team. They did what they had to do, man. Uh, shout out to Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain, fight out Super Chats. Al says, uh, been a few seasons since I down, d- donated. Shout out to CP and Al. We need a sweep of these next four. Yeah, de- definitely got to get these next four. No, no question about it. Shout out to Kurt Cobain now. Uh, to the phones we go, man. 757. What's your name? Where you calling in from? Yo. 757. Oh, yo. Yo, hey. Oh, shoot, man. What's going on? Hey, how are you, man? Oh, I'm always good, brother. Hey. Yeah, long time. The Knicks is looking I'm amazing. Who it is. Sorry? This, this, this. I said the Knicks are looking amazing, man. This this yeah. is Tugboat Taylor. The Knicks are looking amazing. I yeah. mean, yeah, we took a loss today, but come on now. These guys are fully healthy. They're a championship squad. We're looking with the bare bones here. There's okay. no need to be down in the dumps on, you know, I've been seeing a couple of little comments and everything. People got things to say. There's no need to say anything. Yeah, they're all right. We're looking great. Yeah, the, yeah. The, no, we're not looking all right. We're looking yeah. great. I mean, Tony the Tiger. Okay, 
Jalen Brunson is doing Jalen Brunson things. We still need OG to come in. I mean, we were, we were playing a little left. Like you said, Hartenstein, he's putting the numbers in. I think he got his career high tonight. Tibbs is making adjustments that he needs to make. The bench is playing amazing. Your boy Burks was in his Birkin bag tonight. I mean, yeah. he had a little downplay, but he played great. Okay. What, what more is there to say? Yeah, you, you're, you're right on that, man. De- definitely pre- appreciate the call, man. Pause. Wow, that was a <laughs> that was a loud pause. Is that part of the new sound? <laughs> so testing out the soundboard. You just tested out a new test, sound. Test out new, new, sound new, new soundboard. New soundboard. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we working through it, man. We working through it. Uh, we, we tested out the soundboard. Uh, shout out to the Rhyme Animal Chuck D out. Uh, final score not indicative. Uh, says scrapped all road trip. Champs threw their best blows at us. We wanted it. Crucial swings here and there, but they couldn't put us away. Every possession mattered tonight. Our front line is formidable. Yeah, you had some good play there by uh, by by Precious iHeart for sure. iHeart leading the way. You just you know, heart didn't have it tonight, man. Yeah, that definitely didn't happen. So yeah, man. I mean, sure. I think the, the it's always tough because I feel like there is there are teams that can equalize Josh Hart, and any team that's got height, wingspan, um, that also plays physical, will be will be that equalizing factor towards yeah. Josh Hart, and that's what the Never, Denver Nuggets do. I mean, you know, we had Josh Hart playing the, the four today, right? Right. I mean, you're gonna have him playing against uh, MPJ and not or not MP not MPJ uh, Aaron Gordon. You're gonna have him go against Aaron Gordon. I mean, Aaron Gordon is a bigger Josh Hart, stronger, yeah, yeah. versatile, does the same exact thing, a gritty player, right? right? Versatile. That's a tough matchup for Josh Hart because Aaron Gordon was that key factor in the finals last year. I mean, this is no knock on Josh Hart, but there are just some there's some teams that he yeah. won't be able to go full Josh Hart mode. Yeah, this this was just a night where you know the size was gonna hurt him. This the size was ultimately gonna wear them down, uh, starting with the Joker, and, and then you know going on down. But I, I thought Porter Jr. What you know, not just killing him from outside, but also on the inside. That's that's how you knew the the size was uh, was gonna be an issue. Denver beating the Knicks on the glass, forty two to thirty one, and so there it was, you know, there there it was. Uh, salute to everybody in the chat Once again hit that thumbs up on free boys $10 super chat Al from Hasib is king It says it won't be easy But if we want to continue to build around Brunson And get to championship status Mitch might have to go Look at how the Celtics dealt Robert Williams I like the chemistry with iHeart Okay I mean listen We, we got a long way away from, from the uh, From the off season He's on the team Let, Let's figure out how to get him back in there Because you know a, a healthy Mitch or a fresh Mitch, right? He missed 47 games. You get Mitch back fresh and hope that he's in good shape. That can't can't do anything but help this team. A healthy Mitch on the defensive side will be definitely impactful. But how long do you think it's going to take for him to yeah. get back into rhythm? Right? Um, he just started contact yesterday. Yeah. So well, ba- based on based on the statement from Tibbs, it seems like it's going to be a while. Based on how they're treating it, you know what I'm saying? They want to take yeah, their I mean, time with it. Yeah, I mean, he injured his what? He injured his was An- his ankle? ankle surgery. Yeah, ankle surgery. Yeah, so you don't want to rush him back from ankle surgery and yeah. just you know get hurt again. So it's going to take time for him to get back into rhythm, to get back into game shape. You know, much different. I think we've seen that with any player that has come back from an injury. It just takes some time to find their rhythm and. You know, my biggest thing thing about Mitch when he joins his team is will he have that lateral quickness, which is so important for the pick and roll defense that he gives his team. That if Mitch is going to be Mitch, and you got to think about him as a def- defensive anchor, he needs to be ready to move lateral and keep the the ability to backpedal and make sure that he's capable of protecting the rim. So uh, this it'll take time for him, man. But yeah. I'm not ready to just say, think about shipping Mitchell Robinson this offseason. I want to see what it looks like. Trade him, my guy. With OG and Anobi. Not trade him, my guy, man. 
Blockness. I forgot about my guy, man. I'm not here for no Blockness slander. What are we talking about? Trade this guy. We're in the middle of March. We're in a dog fight. We just dropped to fifth in the East. For, we got to focus at the task at hand, man. 14 games left. We got to get home court, four seed, lock it down. And you're going to need a defense. Yeah. All hands on deck. Next man up. You never know what's going to happen, man. Jeez. JJ in the chat saying, trade Mitch. Ow. Oh, well, we know, we know what JJ's all about, man. These guys. Man. Well, who knows? You know, JJ wanted RJ out of here. Now RJ's the most efficient guy we've ever seen. If you yeah. trade Mitch, does he get offense? What, what, does what Mitchell Robinson works? get offense if you trade him? Look how that works, man. We just, we just got to give it time. Let it marinate. We need everybody back on deck. Everybody back on deck, man. Uh, 347, 347, what's your name? Where you calling in from? Hey, what's up? It's JB from Brooklyn. JB, how you feeling, man? I'm good, man. How you doing, bro? Good, man. Good, good. So, okay, let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. We know we cannot have Mitch mm -hmm. and Hartenstein next season. Mm -hmm. If you have to pick one, mm -hmm. which one are you picking? And be honest. Yeah, I mean, as of, as of right now, of course you're going to take Hartenstein, right? Like Hartenstein, of course. Mm. Yeah, of course. Of course. Like, do you think he's better for the offense? Is that why? Absolutely. And, and, he, and, and he's, he's more, a formidable more defensive player. I mean, Mitch is not an untouchable player mm. by any stretch. Like, let, let's not get carried away here. We're not, you know, it's not Will Chamberlain here. Is, is there is there a situation where maybe we give Mitch some minutes to, to up his value for a trade? I, I don't think it has anything with a trade. It, you know, they're going to play him, right? They're going to play him over Precious and, and play him to back up Hartenstein. But I don't think it ha will have anything to do with a the trade. They're going to play him because they, they, they want his talent out there. Yeah. I mean, we haven't seen Mitch with OG in the full squad yet either. Yeah, so. we haven't. We Who knows? Haven't. That, can change, that can change everything. I'm looking forward to seeing that because I, I think you know, they can really get out. Uh, yeah. Um, also, can I say that uh, maybe McBride is uh, mm -hmm. a little bit better than Quickly for the squad? Well, we'll have to see in the playoffs. Quickly didn't show up in the playoffs. Well, McBride. McBride has been looking knocked down. Yeah, he's knocking down now. He's doing it now. <laughs> Playoffs is where you earn your check, man. You know? I tell you what. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, I love you guys. You guys do a great job, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate right. the call, man. Call back anytime. Have a good night. Yes, sir. All right. What do you think, Al, man? My goodness. Can't we just appreciate <laughs> we people we that have helped us, we man? We never appreciate good nice God. things. <laughs> we never. We always want to compare, man. We always want to compare. My goodness. We we. <laughs> We said we thank you to Quick and RJ for helping us, you know? turn this team around. Now it's what now we're Trade like oh. Mitch is so and so better than quickly. We just try to get all these guys out of here. Do we next you thing the next goal is gonna be like, do we really need Julius back? That's gonna be the next one. We don't need Julius back. That, that's what, what are you all saying say. about us behind our backs? That's that's <laughs> how they're gonna say. Oh man. But no, like hey, look. I get the idea of trading Mitchell Robinson. He, as you said, he's not untouchable. But can we just see what it looks like first before we just start? Like, right? What if? What if? Let's just put it out there. What? What if you have enough offense in that starting rotation for the following season, where you're like, you know what? Having a lob threat in Mitchell Robinson, who is, by the way, one of the most elite offensive rebounders, elite defensively, yeah, is just as fine with like having Hartenstein out there. I mean, we won't know. We won't know until we see it. That's why I want to see all the first board saying, move somebody out of here. Okay, look, you're going to have shooting from Brunson, OG, Randall. If you have Dante out there, the paint's open for Mitch then. I mean, we And I, I'm relax. just not quick to just be like, relax. let's throw this guy out on the sidewalk just because he's, Come on, man. he's injured. I get it. I get it. Barnstein's uh, been more durable. He gives you more offense and all those things. But can we please just uh, how is quick? Wait. How is quick getting cats and strays out here, man? He, he's up in the six, minding his business, doing the damn thing. 
He's been playing well. His quick's been playing well. You talk about double doubles. He's averaging what sixteen and four. He's shooting forty percent from three. Dude, and th- this guy's averaging assists like there's no tomorrow. He's giving you like six, yeah. seven assists. I think there was one game where he had what, like eight, like fourteen assists or something of that nature. Why are we doing quick like that, man? What's up with that? Uh, and please, please, like McBride's been awesome, awesome. Okay, knockdown three, great defense, improving as a playmaker. Keyword improving. Yeah. But let's not make it what Quick was for, as a six man for this team. Yeah. Yeah. Please. The for man sure. was second place, should have won first in six man of the year. Let's just, let's, let's, car, let's compartmentalize these guys and like what they yeah. did and what they meant for the team. All right. Let's, for let's sure. stop trying to make the, someone better over the other. <laughs> Brooklyn Vega in the chat asking, have the Knicks ever played the Magic in the playoffs? I don't think so. I don't think they ever played the Magic in the playoffs, bro. No. No. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so, because like, they definitely they never did in the Shaq and Penny days. They never did, and then the Magic went in, in into a slump, while the Knicks were still kind of like making it, and then when the Dwight days, the Knicks weren't good, for most of the Dwight day era. So yeah, I don't, and then if you think about it, even when they had. Borney and all those guys, like DJ Augustine, like Knicks weren't no. in that race at all. No. Like it was the Magic were like consistently that seventh, eighth seed in yeah. the playoffs while the yeah. Knicks were either, let's see, I guess, were they even that good with Melo there? Like I, I just, we yeah, were well, never well, there. With Melo, we, they made we, it three out of the four. They, they made it this first three years. They made it. But they never played yeah, the but Magic, I'm, though. Right. No, that's what I'm saying. Like even with yeah. Melo was here, like, I can't remember if the Magic were in the playoffs. And if so, like, we never faced them. Yeah. It was never in the cards. No, they never, never played them in the, in the playoffs, man. Orlando might be one of the spots, man. Might be the location, bro. I Much, have, I'm not afraid of the Magic uh, hey, in uh, the playoffs. Uh, much better than Cleveland. You know? They'll be tougher. It might, yeah. They, they will, will be tougher. Be tougher. Do, be do tough. not get me wrong. Yeah, they yeah. will be tougher because they play a physical game. They play how the Knicks played last season. Yep. Right? Not a great three-point shooting team, but they play physical. Uh, but that will be their downfall unless they get to this magic shooting, like, hot streak like the Heat did in the playoffs where they can just, out of nowhere, start shooting from downtown. Ain't no way. I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. I can't see that happening at all, man. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for your boys, CP and Alex. On the ones and twos, Al, we got to salute some of our sponsors of tonight, man. First sponsor up is our friends at Manscaped, the leader in men's grooming above and below the waist. Go to manscaped.com and use our code KFTV for 20% off plus free shipping. Salute to our friends at Manscaped, man. You know what time it is, fellas. It is spring. And this episode is brought to you by Manscaped, man. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. Clear out the winter bush with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers, man. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Once again, go to manscaped.com and use our promo code KFTV. For 20% off plus free shipping. It's another classic Manscaped read. No testimonials. No testimonials, man. No testimonials. You know that, man. You know that, man. Yeah. No, no yeah, I was just doing some research as you we were doing the read. The Knicks have played the Magic in the regular season 130 times. Mm. Magic currently have the record uh, season all-time record, 67-63. Mm. Zero times in the playoffs have they met. Yeah, zero in the playoffs. Zero. Definitely zero in the playoffs. So, well, hey. There's a first time for everything. I was just going to say that, man. Great, great, great line. Great line now. Great line. <laughs> great line, man. All right. Let's see who else we got, man. Harrison Dolan on the Discord. Harrison, how you feeling, man? Harrison Dolan, are you there? Okay, we're hearing it. All right, Harrison, go ahead and uh, back out of the Discord, 
And in the meantime, let's go to Omar from the Bronx. Omar, what's good? Yo, what's up, guys? You me okay? Yeah, loud, loud and clear. How you feeling, bro? Yeah, man, I hope all is well. Um, so I just want to make two quick points. First and foremost, like I think these last three weeks of the season, three seed should be the goal. And the main reason is because if we get the three seed, I believe we avoid Boston second round. Mm -hmm. So the three seed is within reach. I know we dropped a fifth, but let's not overreact. Like we got four very winnable games. We should go four and all this next stretch. And hopefully with Cleveland and Mitchell out, we should be able to, you know, what's happened to that three seed. Um, and secondly, like this Julius Randle situation, like all the reports, honestly, like I'm sure he's going to be back, but if he's going to come back and not be effective, like if, if he's going to be anything other than the bully ball Randle, honestly, I'd rather not even have him on the court. I know that sounds crazy. We might throw the all-star thing out there and all that, mm. but if he's not going to play that bully ball type style, we yeah. may be better off without him on the court. Like, we don't need him out there jacking up shots, taking, you know, ill-advised two-pointers. Uh, go, going back to that old Julius Randle, we don't need that. If he can come back, be healthy, play bully ball, and take threes, you know, on occasion, that's fine. If it, the way he's been playing throughout the year. But if he's going to be out there just to be out there, it may be more of a detriment because this team is clicking. There's a lot of good chemistry. There's a lot of depth. Yeah. OG, I'm not too worried about. Even if it's not 100%, OG is one of those guys you can just plug and play. Plug just and his play. presence yeah. Is, yeah. is, you know, impactful. But Randle... It's either he's affecting us positively or he's bringing us down completely. So, you know, I know that's kind of like harsh because he's the all star this year and all that. But if he's not going to be healthy and he's going to and he's going to let that affect his game and style of play, more importantly, we may be better off without him if that's the case. Yeah, I mean, we, we just kind of have to wait and see, man. You know, like we just kind of have to wait and see. It's a very tricky situation. Still not cleared for for physical contact. It's a tricky situation, man. I don't know what to expect at this point. I don't know what to expect either, but I'm not in the camp of just not playing him. Even if he's not that same bully ball, you still have to respect his game. Like, even with him being not fully healthy, you still have to honor who he is and still have to play that game that you think he is going to bully ball. Yeah. And with that, you're going to open up shots for guys on the perimeter and potentially open up the lane for him, dep depending where he is on the court. I'm not in that tr – like, if he's if he's fine enough to play, you got to play him. Like, that's yeah. just how I feel about it. You got, you're got you going to have to honor him if you're an opposing team either way. I'm not in this camp of – and I was I was tuning into the last show, even with the guys who were, you know, asking for Randall to come off the bench. That was – holy cow, people. Yeah, please. yeah. No, they, they're going to have to go with him, man, you, and, and see how You got to go with him. You got to go with him. Just when that will be. I'm thinking first game in the playoffs, bro. Like I said. I hope that it's not. It just, I hope it, it's like five <clears throat> some odd games before the playoffs, man. It just doesn't doesn't seem like it's it's worth gambling on in the middle of the regular season. Because the minute he bumps it, he's going again. At least that's what it seems like, right? I mean, that's how they're making it out to seem. I mean, the fact that they're being this cautious with him makes it seem like the injury makes it seem like he's going to need off-season surgery, which I wouldn't be surprised. And if they're that worried about him getting re-injured, it leads to what you think of him playing for the first time in the playoffs, and you're putting him on ice until then. But once again, he's a rhythm player. Yeah, and you're taking a gamble. So. Big time. It, either way, you're taking a gamble if you have him play before the playoffs. You're taking a gamble if he starts in the playoffs. Taking a gamble. <laughs> uh, uh. Yeah, it's a tough call. Between man. this and OG, CP, tough. it is rough. Rough. It's rough. How do you feel about OG right now? Uh, I think he'll be fine. Yeah, I, I think he'll be all right. I could see him being another guy that's like first game in a playoff type. Mm. You know, just 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 let let the inflammation go down. Just let him chill. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I could totally see that happening. But I, I I'm I have more confidence in him being closer to himself. Way more confidence in him being closer to himself than Julius. I mean, he's a, he's a role player, so. But even still, to to not not even just offensively, but defensively, like I'm fine with him. Julius is, is way more of a fluid situation. I don't know. 
what what makes you give more i mean og hasn't og's notoriously known for missing games because of his yeah. being injury prone right so what gives you what gives you more confidence in og being ready for the playoffs over julius well to me they're kind of in the sorry. same bucket i would say because if you know none none of the none of the reports um you didn't really get much like conclusive reports, right? For one, they said the MRI came back clean. So then if it's just routine soreness or tendonitis, that's something that should go down. You know, maybe something flared up on him. That's something that should go down with time, ice, peat, whatever it is, and just a little physical death. Like some, that's something that should take care of itself just over time to calm down. But with Julia's situation, it just seems like something that is like, you already know that it's in bad shape and that you, you're you're going to be – you are susceptible to dislocating it again. With OG, uh, according to, to people, you know, you can't, you can't re-aggravate a bone spur if it's already cleaned out. So I just feel like, you know, it's easier to rely on, on him rather than, uh, than Randall. Yeah, and I, I think – for me, is that the concern is that even though you can't re-injure, re-aggravate a bone spur, the fact is that he's a player that likes to play at 100%. We, we know this. And, look, you, we heard him yelp against the Portland Trailblazers. I just want to be healthy for the playoffs. Because if I, he just... It just does not seem like a guy. He doesn't seem like a guy who's going to play through injury. That's the one thing I could say about Randall. He will play through any injury possible. We saw him do it against with the ankle. We saw it numerous. We've seen it numerous times with Randall. And that's what Tom Thibodeau loves about Randall and praises about Randall. He will play through soreness, injury, no matter what. OG, a little different. It's a different situation to me. To me, they're both guys that I'm like, we can get to the playoffs. I have. Do I think I would be confident in OG? I guess the difference is we don't know how Randall will perform in the playoffs. We'll have an idea of how OG will perform in the playoffs. Can have an idea of how OG will perform in the playoffs. My thing is that with both of them, I'm not so sure that they will both complete the playoffs. I, I think I think OG's playing hella high water, man. That that Two injuries and all. That 100 percent shit is going to go out the window. He's, he, it's money time, man. Eh? It's money time. He'll do that. He'll do that next season. Once he gets the bag, it's time to go get the bag. So even but if he's at seventy percent, he's going out there, bro. Trust me, bro. But he's can you argue play. the same point, saying that if he gets injured this offseason, that lessens his value by instead of being that one hundred percent guy? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think I don't think he can. I don't think he can hurt his value. If he goes out there, you don't think the Knicks would want to protect him at all costs because of same thing like Randall. You want to see the future value out of him. It's money time, man. Mm -hmm. It's playoffs. Playoffs. I, I think he. I think he's going. He's, he's going to be out there. All Definitely right. going to be out there. If he wants those thirty bags, he's he's going out there. Ain't no sitting out. Ain't no, uh, oh, my elbow. No, he's got to be out there, man. There's no way. Bright lights, and I, I heard they jacked up the prices of playoff tickets. I heard season ticket holders, yeah. So I heard season ticket holders are getting hit. So, Jimmy D, Jimmy D wants his, wants his bread. <laughs> Jimmy D wants his bread, man. Third time in four years. Third to be in back time in, the in four years, man. What do you guys think in the chat? Let's uh let's get Harrison Dolan back up here on the Discord. Harrison Dolan, go ahead and unmute your mic. Harrison Dolan going once. Harrison said he fixes he fixed his audio, man. Are you there? He said he fixed his audio. He's going again. All right. Harrison, try again, man. Maybe third time's a charm. Six four six on the phone. Six four six. What's your name? Where are you calling in from? Six four six. Yo. Hello. Hey, what's up, man? This is Steve. I'm from Harlem. Steve, what's good? Harlem, USA. How you feeling, man? 
Chilling, man, chilling, chilling. Yeah, I just want to say one quick thing. Yeah. I know Bogey is catching a lot of slack, and yeah. I ain't going to lie, but Joe is a big fan of Bogey. But yeah. what, I, what I'm noticing is Tibbs, I don't know what it is with Tibbs. Like, he, I know he has a specific play style that he likes, but Bogey is not a spot-up shooter out the gate. He's more of a rhythm ISO scorer. Like, he needs to create his own buckets. Like, maybe one or two shots where he kind of creates his own buckets, and then he can turn into a spotter from there once he has a rhythm going. I think just kind of playing him in the corner, it's, yeah, he can hit an open shot now and then, but I think really to start his game off, he needs like a good wing or top of the key iso, maybe create something for someone else. Like he, he has to dribble himself into a rhythm almost. And I think he hasn't really had a fair opportunity to do that just yet. But I think once Tibbs figures that out, we don't have a lot of iso players, Jalen Brunson, Burks, arguably, and maybe Bojan, um, Bojan is our only ISO players. And Randall was a lot of ISO. So being that Randall's not there anymore, I think maybe give Bogey a few more ISO plays and see how that works out. And then we can decide, like, if this is a total bust or not. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. From the ISO plays I see him doing, he, he's he's not quick. He has no quickness. He's getting beat to his spots, and, and then he's he's just getting desperate, and that's when that's that's when he gets in trouble. He, two games in a row, he uh, he he got his pockets picked by by trying to force those cross court passes to Burks in the corner. It, it happened in the Golden State game, and it happened tonight against the Nuggets. It's just like once they beat him to his spots, they already know where he's gonna go. He's got nowhere else to go, so they just jump into his passing lanes and, and snatch it from him. So I don't know. I I think you know. Maybe more time, you know, is it more time with Jalen? Is it what happens when Julius comes back and, and he's able to play off of those guys a little bit more? I just feel like right now, a lot of, like, CK was saying the same thing. Like, yeah, he's a better player when he puts the ball on the floor. But I just don't, I haven't seen it so far, man. That's fair to say. I mean, man, I just want to say shout out to y'all. Um, I recently just started tuning in. I love what y'all do. Appreciate Alex, it. Alex, shout out to him, too. Um, you told me just keep going. I'm, I'm really rocking with y'all. Appreciate it, man. Steve from Harlem World. Harlem, stand up. Appreciate the call, man. Call back anytime. Go ahead, Al. I mean, Bogey's been doing his ISO thing, though, since he's been on the Knicks. I mean, he's been given that free reign. And sometimes he gets you 20 points. Sometimes right. he does what he does tonight. So, both. I them, mean, he, man. it's a mixed bag, man. But the thought is for him to be a spot-up shooter. And we've definitely seen him spot up. He could be a fine spot-up shooter. It's just, will Randall help? I think Randall will help. Yeah. I think Brunson helps when he's out there as well. But it's also just making sure that we find him and get him in rhythm. And I mean, that's also due to his teammates who's out there with the second unit. I mean, if you're going to have Burks going in and out between the guy that's like, I'm going to be aggressive, get my pocket stolen by Jamal Murray, and then force Induce McBride to have to take a charge. Yeah. I mean, that's (laughs) that's going to be the thing. And then it's going to be a game of your turn, my turn. And that's, you know, that kind of does play to what you want from Bogey. But then it's not so great when you watch Bogey out there trying to create an isolation all the time. Yeah. And what is with the with the Bodega nickname, man? I see J.D. there is it Bodega. We're not giving this guy a nickname, man. Oh, you no. got to talk to Cody Glock, man. Cody no. Glock called him Bodega. No, 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 no. We're not calling him no damn Bodega. You got to earn your nickname, man. We're not calling him. What is, what is with that? The man's been here for a cup of coffee, and he's probably going to be going after next year. We're going to call it Bodega? Come on, man. We got to save that nickname. Now, get that out of there, man. Well, who else is going to have that? Who's going to get that nickname? Listen, man. Who? You, you, you can't get that nickname. No, no way. No. Why? What is what we're is wrong to, with that nickname, We're not going for that, man. Because he's, he's bumming it up out there, and he just got here. He has no resume. He didn't earn his stripes yet. We, he, okay, he had one good game against the Rockets. That was his. That was his Nick. Game, that was his coming out party. He didn't even have one at the Garden yet. You can't call him Bodega. He didn't have his Garden come out party yet. Can't do that. My guy, Big Money's got. He's got a resume here. One season. Yeah, two seasons. He was here for two seasons. I mean, one season was yeah. better than the other. Let's one keep it season buck. was better than the other. I mean, point guard. We got point guard Burks. And, and, we didn't and call him playoff, and bag. He gave you a We didn't call game. him MJ he Burks. Gave, he that gave season. you one playoff game at the Garden. Bright lights. That's right. In that one Bright good lights. season. In that one good season. Bright lights. In that one good season. 
So you can, now, you can, now, you can, now you we can have now, get, now we're getting now we're getting can't more call season Bo, Burks. Bodega, he's throwing the ball all over the place. He's bricking all over the place. Bodega bricks. <laughs> Burks has one good game, and you're you're ready. You're ready to go. You're ready to go in on, 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 on Bodega. We can't, we, can't, we can't be so quick with the nicknames, man. These guys, he's not even gonna be here that long. We can't be so quick for the name. We got people calling in, calling Burks MJ. <laughs> that was just Ron from Baltimore a while now. Ron from Baltimore started that. I, I didn't start that. I am the nickname commissioner, bro, if you didn't know. You, along, wow. along with the conductor. So you're the conductor? Yeah. The nickname commissioner? Yeah. The the, the founder, CEO, host of Knicks Fan TV? Yeah, yeah. What, what else is on your resume? Yeah. Please, enlighten us. You know what was so funny? This story time with CP presented by uh, Ginger Hale's Lemonade. Go to Ginger Hale's uh, Lemonade. Ah, here we go. It's story time and, telling. Uh, we got Cooking with CP, the franchise, coming on the way, too. For 15% off plus free shipping. You know what was so funny, man? I, I, I went to that um, that media conference um, over the, during, during this week. Good time. Very, very good time. Very, very informative. And, uh, and uh, you know, took a lot of notes to move, move the brand forward. But, uh... I was in a panel. I was sitting on a panel, sitting in on a panel, not 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 participating, listening. And it was ho- one of them was with uh, Craig Barry, the chief content officer at TNT Sports. So the mm-hmm. moderator, they they're going back and forth about like inside the NBA, like you know some of the the trials and tribulations, the triumphs, whatever. And he's like, you know what, Ernie Johnson was was really the guy that made the thing go. He was like the conductor. I thought about you when I heard that comment, man. I did. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he said. Ernie. Okay. Ernie, Ernie Johnson. I mean, he is a conductor, yeah. man. He, 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 yeah. he keeps that panel afloat he's a, he's a conductor. and together. He's a conductor, man. And, and you thought about me because that's what you do for the show. They just keep it all together. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> is that what you're trying to tell to me over here? That's it. That, okay. That is correct, man. So gotcha. yes, given that we, that, that I am the, the, the nickname commissioner. Right? And I, deflector. I gave y'all Broadway Barrett. Oh, and I gave y'all Captain Clutch. They didn't give me my royalties on that. But Steve and Baca back. They didn't give me my royalties on that one. I'm not going to collect. Mm. Captain Clutch did come from here. Everybody that watches this fan TV knows. Came from here. So wait, where, what is what is Burks' nickname? Bricks? Big money. Big money. It's, it's big money, man. And what in what world has he deserved that nickname, Big Money? Well, that that wasn't now. That was before then. That so, was when he first got here. He got that name. Well, you keep a nickname because you're consistent, are you not? This is this is yeah. This is his third season with the team. He's earned that. You know what I'm saying? He's not Big Money this year. He he was Big Money before that. He came in. My to, point exactly. So how are we calling him Big Money, money Burks? Because that's his, that's his name. You never lose your nickname. Once you get it, you never lose it. But you got to earn that first. I think you can lose a nickname. I think we should nah. revoke Big Money Ain't no Burks. way. Ain't no way. You can't lose a nickname. Once you earn it, you earn it. Right? <laughs> Let me ask you this. <laughs> Knicks Fan TV doesn't exist anymore. Are you still going outside? Oh, being, I'm oh CP shout out Eddie Mar. Block Nest Mods. I gave y'all Block Nest too. That's, that's four. That's four from the Nickname Commission. I gave y'all Block Nest Monster. Back in the day, five years ago. Let's talk about it. We completely took the show off the rails, man. <laughs> Easy peasy. Big Brick Money City Burks. Burks. Brick City Burks. <laughs> that's a good nickname. Can you? Are we? Can we crown him with Brick City Burks? Because that's more accurate nowadays. Yo. Yo, when I see when I see one of the shots go off the side of the side of the uh, the backboard, I said, "Oh boy, that's your guy, though. That's your guy." <laughs> My man, shake the bake that threw one off the side of the. <laughs> it hit the padding on the. T- <laughs> How many? Uh, is there any point where you feel confident in any Yo. shots that you put up? I mean. To be honest, <laughs> no. Most of his points came from the free throw no. line. He, he was Alan, just drawing it's Alan contact. Burks, bro. We've, I've never been confident in a single shot the guy takes, man. But when it's in, it's money. That's why they call him Big Money. No, oh, God. 
<laughs> he, he hits the padding on the You're rim. You're putting that nickname up there with like Chauncey Billup and like the big sh- <laughs> in the big shot, Mister Big Shot. He, he hits the padding on 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 the, on the backboard. Next possession, he airballs a, a floater. <laughs> Then he knocks down the elbow three, and you're like, bro, are we back in the game? Back in the game, man. <laughs> Shout out to JD. <laughs> Burks would have been the perfect manager at Home Depot construction section. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's the perfect cardiac Nick, man. Perfect cardiac Nick. Oh, 1,000%. Yeah. Perfect cardiac Nick. That's Burks for you. From Sacramento to Golden State to Denver. It's a roller coaster ride, but he, he went. Don't to forget Colorado. Philly. He was at Philly at one point. Yeah, no, I'm just talking about the the trips on the road trip. This past oh. road trip, yeah, yeah. He was oh. Oh. Burks played for like half the league. Um, yeah, I'm sure the rest of the, the half of the league is calling him Big Money Burks as well. <laughs> Bumble, stumble, and blunder, Burks. Shout out to Ari from Taiwan. All right, who else we got in here? Okay, we'll, we'll try Harrison Dolan in there again. And and uh, we'll load up Will from LI. So to everybody in the chat, Knicks lose one thirteen to one hundred to the the uh, Denver Nuggets, man. One thirteen to one hundred, man. All right, let's try it again. Uh, Harrison Dolan, Harrison Dolan, go ahead and uh, I'll mute your mic. Can you hear me this time? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know what Discord was doing. How you guys doing? Good, man. How you feeling, man? I'm feeling good. Yeah. Listen, man. Um, I feel like a lot of us in, here in Knicks Nation are not living in the present. And what I mean is we're worrying about the offseason mm-hmm. in regards to iHeart and Mitch when what we should be focusing on is that this is probably the last time we're going to have a playoff run with iHeart and Mitch on the team. Mm, okay. And, yeah, like these guys are both going to protect the rim at an elite level for 48 minutes. And that's not an advantage I'm going to have next year, most likely. Yeah. And people are forgetting just how good Mitchell Robinson is. The guy that eliminated the Cavaliers last year. And yeah. 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 Oh, I, I mean, we, I, we, got, we got to clip you, man. We got to clip your audio is clipping a little bit. Well, we get it. He says, he says we got to appreciate what we have, Al. Got to appreciate what we have. All right. Uh, Will from LI. Will, you up next, man. Go ahead and unmute your mic. Hey, CP, Alex, you guys got me? Latin clear, how you feeling? Good, bro, good, bro. And, I, hey, I, first off, I just got a second off, uh, second what that guy said and second yeah. to what you guys have been saying because the slander has been crazy, yeah. especially from Ari, okay? Yeah. <laughs> when we went to that uh, the Knicks fan party, shout out to you for that Knicks fan event, Ari was talking crazy with these hot takes and yeah. trading yeah. Mitch for, you know, some some basketballs or something crazy. No, yeah. We, yeah. we're not doing that. We're not doing that. But um, either way, I did want to talk to you guys about uh, specifically Ananobi, and mm-hmm. Alex already touched on it a little bit but i was looking at uh the the recent article from stefan bondi when he was talking about uh, ananobi and how he re-aggravated his elbow Mm -hmm. and you know one thing he said in the article is that you know from his tenure in you know from toronto that people around him said that he did he's not the type of player to like to play through injuries very much Mm -hmm. what uh, alex said so, you know, I'm thinking about this like I'm still happy for the trade, you know, and, and shout out to RJ and, and Quick for doing their thing over there in Toronto. But the, the idea is if he is injury prone and he also does not like to play through injury, mm-hmm. we are going to need a backup. And it's going to have to be something solid because mm-hmm. as much as I don't know if we would have won today if he would have been in the game, but what I bet you is that – uh. Uh, what what what's his name? MPJ. He would have yeah. he would have not gone off the way he would have. You yeah, know, we would have had true. a body to throw at him. And yeah. it's just like if you're really gonna hold so much of the defense on Ananobi, but yet now I'm I'm not gonna say what everybody else was saying on Twitter. They're saying that you know Ananobi's not tough enough to play through the injuries, and that's just like a thing. But I'm just saying if he's gonna be one of the anchors for our defense, and then you lose Mitch, you know this defense is not gonna be this year, I mean, next year, what it was this year. That's all I'm going to say. But I just want to get your yeah. points on it. Do you think that Ananobi, you know, do you think that's going to be an issue going forward, that he's not going to want to push through injuries even when he has yeah. them? And I will say, and we do, we do have to mention, of course, this season he is a, technically a free agent. 
He may not want to mess up his bag, so you got to put that into play. But at the same time, I would just hope that after we sign him, that I don't know. This elbow injury is very weird. I just never seen a player out so long for an elbow injury. I'm not saying he's not tough. I'm just saying he might be cautious. But yeah. going forward, I I hope that this is not the norm. But either way, I'll lead you guys to it. Thank you. Yeah, I certainly hope it's not the norm. You know, but he has had a hint- history of uh, uh, of nagging injuries or knickknack injuries, I guess you can call it. Like. It's a variety of them. Um, but I think he'll be ready, man. I think he'll, uh, I think he'll be fine for the playoffs. Uh, but, yeah, they, they will need depth. They have two draft picks coming up in the draft. We'll see if they intend to keep both or do they move one, do they move down and, and uh, go for depth, which, which you could see in a draft like this. But either way, uh, I think they should look to, uh, to either get, uh, you know, a, a two, three combo or a 3-4 or a combo. Somebody with some versatility, uh, you know, Peyton Watson type. You look at a Peyton Watson, man, with the wingspan and the athleticism that he has. That, that's why I like to see the Knicks go uh, and bring that off the bench. I'm just concerned because, you know, and it's not saying that he won't play in the playoffs, but just a history of him being in and out, not liking to play through injury, as Will also brought up. It's just a concern because yeah. – he is so important to what the Knicks do defensively that if you're not going to have him and you made a trade for him and he's not going to be available all the time, it's big. If you tell me that you don't have him through the regular season and then you, you don't have him through most of the regular season, you have him every single time of the playoffs, I'll gladly take that. But, <clears throat> well, I wouldn't say I would gladly take that. It depends. I, if you're playing, he needs to be playing like 50, 60 games throughout the regular season and then yeah. making the playoffs. Yeah. That's what, let me put, let me put some numbers on that. Mm-hmm. But if he's going to be missing the playoffs, when he's going to be so important, that's tough, man. Yeah. That's really tough. And I'm just concerned, like, and to Will's point, like, look, he is going to be a free agent. He's worrying about his back, too. He wants 30, 40 million, whatever it may be. You know, you get hurt this offseason. Let's be real. That lessens your value. You talk about a man quickly who's looking for an extension, right? He didn't play well in the playoffs. Ruin those contract talks. You know how that would come up. It doesn't matter how, you know, buddy, buddy, everybody is in this, in this, uh, in, in the business side of, uh, the NBA business, is still business. They're going to bring up everything that you did or haven't done when they get to the table. Oh, well, you didn't play this many games throughout the regular season. Well, you know, you didn't play this many games in the playoffs. Oh, well, you know, you didn't perform this way in the playoffs. Right. So why are you deserving in this bag? You know it. I know it. Everybody else knows it. So for OG, why would he even take that risk if he's not 100%? To you know, go re- go get injured in the playoffs, or aggravate something. I hope I hope I'm I hope that he does, man. I hope that he because you know we've heard the rumor that he wants to be in New York. He wants to play for this team. That he should go out there and do that. He's looked great on this team. Perfect fit. Perfect fit. He should want to go out there and perform. But the injury history stuff, man, I can't overlook that. That's just who he is. That's who he has been. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up on free board. CP and Alex on the ones and twos. Uh, Knicks lose to the Nuggets, man, 113 to 100. Here are some of the key stats of the night. Key stats of the night presented by Underdog Fantasy. And uh, when you look at this one, you know, both teams came out the gates hot. I think the Nuggets were shooting like 60% at the half. Knicks were around 50. Uh, the Knicks finished shooting 48%. Uh, from the field, and the Nuggets 53%, damn near 54. Uh, from three, uh, the Knicks shot 35%, 30, just 30% for the Nuggets, one of the better assisting teams in the league. Nuggets beat the Knicks by three in the assist department, 31-28. to 28. They out-rebounded the Knicks 42-31. to 31. Uh, Knicks only 10 turnovers, leading to 13 Denver points. I thought the Knicks did a, did a good job hold, taking care of the ball, which was which was definitely critical when you're on the road against uh, a great team like this. Uh, Nuggets also 10 turnovers, leading to 15 uh, Nick points off a of turnover. So both teams were uh, fairly good at protecting the ball. But points in the paint is where things got dicey for the Knicks, man. They lost by 20, 66 to 46. Uh, the Nuggets really just imposing their will with their size, and, and uh, there was just too much for the Knicks to to, uh, to handle. Largest lead for the Nuggets, 14. Largest lead for the Knicks, 6. What do you think, y'all? And lead changes in this game. 
which was which tells you how competitive this game was, especially to start. But unfortunately, once you got to the end of the second quarter and then all of the second half, it was the Nuggets game and the Nuggets ran away with it. But the big thing, you know, we're getting at second chance points too. The Nuggets were able to dominate on getting their on offensive rebounds and just getting some more points in the Knicks world, which is a which is a category the Knicks usually thrive in, but not tonight. So then you also talk about points in the paint, which adds up to their second chance opportunities. And then they just dominate on fast breaks, man. I mean, in all those categories, you just see that, especially in second chance opportunities, fast break points, Nuggets just were able to dominate in those categories and just expose the Knicks in tonight's game. So the, the Nuggets didn't even shoot that well. They shot 30% from three, yeah. but they were able to get out on transition and get to their spots in the paint just to get more efficient looks. And so that's all wrote for the New York Knicks, man. But they made it close, man. Yeah. They made it close. True indeed. True indeed, man. All right. Um, so let's take a look at this. The key stats of the night brought to you guys by Underdog Fantasy. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use our code KFTV for an instant deposit match of up to $100. And uh, one of the best things about Underdog Fantasy is, number one, you have the pickums in which you will pick uh, between two to six players and predict two to five players and predict whether or not those players will do higher or lower than a given stat projection that underdog fantasy has laid out. And um, <clears throat> also you have the fantasy draft, which team KFTV participated in tonight. It was myself it was Alex CK and JD. And so far the leaderboard, Al team JD sports talk. Currently leading with 265 fantasy points. His team consisted mm. of, he drafted Jokic. What a traitor. <clears throat> drafted Jokic tonight. 65 fantasy points for Jokic. He had 30 points, 14 uh, rebounds, 11 assists. That was a good pickup. He drafted Dame. 30 points, 12 assists for Dame, two steals. Drafted Brunson as well. 26, two, nine assists. Yeah, Jamal Murray, Mikhail Bridges, and Eamon Thompson. Then you had um, my team is in second place right now. Three quarters left with 233. I got DeJounte Murray, who's currently killing it. 29 points, nine rebounds, 10 assists, four steals for DeJounte Murray against the Suns right now. Mm. Uh, I had iHeart, which is also a good pickup by me. Good job by GM uh, Franchise. 20 points, eight rebounds, three assists, one steal, two blocks for iHeart. That's a good fantasy night. Jalen Green, who's been terrorizing the league since uh, his baby announcement, man. He's really been going at it. Him and DeMar DeRozan got into a little, got a little smoke going tonight. Jalen yeah, Green, did. 26 points, four rebounds. Yeah, I think that looked personal. Three assists, one steal, one block for Jalen Green. I had Clint Capella. KD not doing too much right now. 19-4 and two. Three blocks for KD, though. Not bad. Then CK had Vucevic. CK's in third place right now. Two quarters left. He's got Vucevic. Giannis, who didn't do too much from a fantasy standpoint. Uh, you got Kyrie, Fred Van Fleet, Bogdan Bogdanovich, and Yusuf Nurkic. And then your team, Al, you got one quarter left, fourth place for Team Tratacaster. You did have Luka Doncic, 34 points, nine rebounds, eight assists, four steals. It's a 64-point fantasy night. You got Book, Marketing, Sexton, Jabari Smith, and Josh Hart, oof, only six fantasy points for Josh Hart. <laughs> wow. Wow. Now, I was hoping Josh Hart would have a Josh Hart night. Yeah. But, hey, <clears throat> you live and you learn, CP. You yeah, live and you learn. It's one of those things. So, so right now, you... you know, JD's in, in first for right now. But, um, you know, team franchise is not done yet. We're not, we're it's not interesting done. how JD was like, oh, I'm losing. A... JD, this is very good. Uh... You know, very good play on your part. It's acting. Say that you're losing. You yeah. you raise the it's good acting. you raise the hopes of everybody. Yeah, it's good acting. It's good. It's good acting by by JD tonight, man. So, it is. It is what it is. Um, let's see who else we got on. <laughs> he here, said, said games are over. I'll send you guys a treat. Seven one eight. What's your name? What are you calling in from? Seven one eight. Hey, what's up? It's saying again from the Bronx. How you doing? Man? Hey, how are you, man? Doing good. Man, as I wait on hold, there's so much more that I want to talk about. Let's go. I'll try to keep it short. First thing I'll say, though, is mm -hmm. I got to give a shout-out to Deuce McBride because I felt so bad for this guy out there. 
having to chase Jamal Murray yeah. around all these screen things. Jamal he Murray took it not personal Steph tonight. Curry. He's so much bigger and stronger. And I'm just watching this dude taking screens by Jokic and yeah. DeAndre Jordan. I'm like, damn, I feel bad for this dude. He's probably yeah. in a cold tub still as we speak. Yeah. But uh um but two things. You had two callers that said something and I wanted to kind of give some context to why what they said was wrong. Mm-hmm. So Omar was talking about, oh, when Julius comes you know maybe we don't play julius he's gonna be hurt he can't play bully ball listen mm-hmm. what alex said is right you got to play him because for the sole reason of the fact that when you have julius out there mm-hmm. it allows for the pressure to be taken off of Jalen brunson for not having to deal with blitzes and mm-hmm. double teams all game long so if julius can go you put him out there just for that alone just for that alone is going to help the whole entire offense. So you got to have him out there. Okay. That's number one. Um, now with Bogdanovich, okay. If now I'm a former ball player, I play a little bit of college ball. That's why I love listening to JD talk because we have a very similar mind. Mm. When you look at Bogdanovich and the way that he's playing right now, he is playing like he thinks he's a mercenary. Like they told him, we brought you here to come score, right? Mm-hmm. So he's like, oh, word, I'm gonna, I got to go out here and score. But he actually is a spot-up shooter. So the mm-hmm. problem is is that those spot-up shots are not landing. So he's in his mind, he's like, well, if these aren't dropping, I got to make something else happen so I can continue getting these minutes mm-hmm. and I can continue try to contribute to this team in some way. But when you do that and you're forcing things, that's when you're making bad decisions and you see him take some shots and you're just like, Yo, my man, what are you doing? And you're begging for the guy to go back to the bench, and you're starting to look at him like, yo, is this Fournier but with a little bit more of a bag? And that's when you start to get really, really pissed off at him. But what I like about what Burks did tonight Mm -hmm. was that you can see that he's slowly starting to let the game come to him, even though he had a couple of plays today where I'm just like, bro, what are you doing? But you could see that he was trying to – Get more into the flow of the offense. Make a make a move. Maybe make it look. Maybe uh, find a read and make a pass before he actually goes straight into. Let me create something for myself and make yeah. it happen. So he's getting out of that mercenary mindset slowly but surely. But you know, on a night like tonight, you know, you got to tip your hat to the guys just yeah. for giving the effort that they give because it was. Yo, you look at that lineup over there in Denver, and what we had to put out there this is like yeah, going to be a rough one. So I, beast mode. Yeah, yeah, but it, but shout out to the team yeah. for playing so hard and giving us something yeah. respectable to watch. So I'll leave it there. Appreciate the call, man. Yeah, you know, A. a- B. He took took a couple of chucks, but he had to do what he had to do out there. Team needed him. Once I, once I saw the ragu wasn't wasn't really cooking. The ragu wasn't really baking a night. You know, we knew it was big money time, especially in that fourth quarter. And, uh, you know, carried the team for about a good eight minutes. And then the Nuggets just, just did, what, do, did what they did best. Did what they do best, which is just kick into championship mode and uh, take over, man. But it is what it is. Great great road trip, 3-1 and one on the trip. Like I said, well, you go 3-1, and one, it was a great trip. 2-2, two and two, I would have been fine with 2-2, two and two, but they go 3-1, and one, even better. What? That's great. Hey, look, they played so they played against the Warriors. They beat them. They beat the Kings. Yeah. Yo, tip your cap, man. That's yeah. that's great performances, especially being shorthanded. Salute, salute, man. Um, I see a lot of our franchise channel members in the building, man. You know what? I didn't announce the March franchise channel member giveaway out. For our franchise channel members, our loyal, loyal franchise channel members, the March giveaway will be copy of a new Knicks book, man. Some of you that guys that are Knicks book collectors, this is another good one. Kings of the Garden, the New York Knicks and their city. And this is by Adam Cribbles. I've already interviewed him just a couple weeks ago, and I'm, I'm going to put that interview out next week. The book comes out in April. I believe April 15th, the book comes out. So this is going to go, the hardcover is going to go to one lucky franchise channel member, for free if they win it and the end of, at during our end of the month giveaway, which will be our 500th episode of Post Game Live on March 29th. And this one is chronicles the uh, the 80s Knicks, an early early uh, 80s Knicks team that's not really talked about, man. This is the post championship era 
where it goes into, you know, the later Clyde years, Monroe, uh, they get Bob McAdoo, they get Spencer Haywood. This is a tumultuous time in Nick history, which also coincides with a tumultuous time in New York City history. And during that time, you had the birth of hip hop. You had a lot of things going on, both in New York and around the country. And uh, this author, Adam Cribbles, man, did a great, great job of really, really putting all of the storylines together, man, with a great, great uh, historic view of the team and the city. So this is going to go to a franchise channel member. I've already read it. It's a great book, and we're going to share the love with our people, man. So make sure you guys stay tuned uh, because this will be going to one lucky channel member at the end of the month, Al. It's a good book, man. Kings of the Garden. Kings of the Garden. Real good book. And, uh, and we'll drop I that can't interview. I can to get my copy. And we'll drop that interview in, uh, in, in a week or so. Great book, man. So this is going to go to a franchise channel member. Stay tuned for the giveaway announcement. Uh, remember that this show's available in audio podcast format, man. No reason to miss it. Catch us on all podcast formats. If you did miss it, salute to the Replay Gang. And uh, yeah, man, salute to our sponsors, man. Underdog Fantasy. Use our code KFTV for instant deposit match of up to $100. Go to manscaped.com. Use our code KFTV for 20% off plus free shipping. And Ginger Hales. Go to gingerhales.com for their ginger lemonade. Use our code KFTV at checkout for 15% off your first order. Al, great show. We out of here, man. Peace.